Hi, welcome back to Box of Delights. In this episode, I want to give you a demonstration of Mythotopia, a Martin Wallace game published by Treefrog Games. As one of the feuding lords of Mythotopia, you've inherited a number of provinces scattered to the four points of the compass. To succeed and emerge as the first lord of Mythotopia, you must expand your empire, build roads to connect your provinces, grow towns into cities, enter lands haunted by ancient dragons, and hold back the armies of those who would oppose you. I'm not going to give you a full playthrough, this is a game for two to four, but I'm going to give you a demonstration of how it works, and I love it. The game draws heavily on a few acres of snow, and has a deck building element inspired by Dominion. This is a hybrid type game. These are the kind of games I really, really enjoy. You'll be using cards at your disposal to to build things, to take actions, control provinces, you know, control the board and earn victory points. This has some war gaming. There's conflict of units moving around the board. It's got mechanisms you're going to be familiar with combined in different ways. Whether you're a thematic, you're a war gamer, you're going to find something in here that I hope you're going to enjoy. The board itself is going to have different terrain effects. We've got the victory point track going around the outside there. It's going to cost you additional resources to cross these hills, mountains, which are impassable. Rugged terrain, which becomes a good defensive location. And then there's sea areas where only ships can be placed. You'll win the game by having the most victory points. And if you're familiar with Dominion, where you have different sets of victory point cards, and once one of those sets is eliminated, the provinces, then the game ends. The same kind of thing happens here. You've got three victory point cards here which are fixed, then you've got a set of four additional which are taken at random. Okay, so there's going to be some variability, these variable um, victory point cards. So we're going to take four of these. Once any four or more of these victory point cards have been exhausted, then any player can claim victory if they have the most victory points. So for example, for the roads, the city or the castle, every time you build a road, a city or a castle, you'll take one of these victory point tokens, and the number is dictated here. It says times six or times seven. It's six for a two-player game, seven for a three or four-player game. So there's six of them here on roads. Once all those Victory points are claimed. Once six roads have been built, then that victory point card is exhausted. Once we hit four or more, then the game can end in victory. And then these random ones, right, these variable ones, the Gilded City, there's only four single victory point tokens on here. And you can claim one of these when you build a city, pay an extra gold, and you'll create what's called a Gilded City, and you can take a victory point counter from here. Lord of the Isles has just two counters on it, a three and a two, and you'll claim those by taking control of those islands on the map. These here, there's th three, two victory points. If you control a province that contains a dragon, obviously we're going to understand these things once we get into the gameplay. And then roadside inns, these are claimed by spending an extra gold when you build a road. And there's plenty of these thick card tokens. Each player starts with a set of player counters. We have a stash of towns and cities, there's four cities. You take two ships, six armies, the rest go back to the supply. And there's also a citadel counter, but you'll only use this if you have the citadel victory point card in play. We don't, so that goes back to the box. Each player also has a starting deck of cards. We have an actions reminder and a reserve. And to start the game off, place each of your cities in these reserve spots leaving just the two uncovered. Next, take a stack of province cards. These are all the ones with province run at the bottom. There's a, another bunch of cards. These are improvements. Make sure they're separate. Give them a good shuffle. And then deal a number to each player, depending on how many players in the game. For a two-player game, it's 11 each. 
the rest placed to one side. And this starting deck here tells you which provinces you control at the start of the game. So for example, the red player here has Hatchel, so we'll place one of his towns here in Hatchel. We'll do the same for the remaining cards. And then we'll do the same for the blue player. And then finally we'll do the same for heavy dragons. If you had rune stones in, you'd do the same for rune stones. Uh, there's two sets of tokens. There's the heavy dragons and the rune stones. For some reason the, the rule book's got them the wrong way around, but these are your dragon tokens. We need to get five of these, and we're going to place one dragon in each of five provinces. Of course, if you don't have the the rune stones or dragons victory points then you don't do either of those. So let's grab the top five. One, two, three, four, five. This can go face up now because you don't draw from this but you may have to seek out a card. Let's see where our dragons go. One in Trogel. Okay. So we got some <laughs> all our dragons are around here in these kind of mountainous regions. And we can place these cards back over here. Now like any good deck building game we need to create our starting deck so we'll take our four actions the build, market, army, ship, shuffle them in with our starting provinces so we've got our starting deck of 15 cards playing two player. Alright, give these a good shuffle. The rule book does say there's five starting cards but there's not, there's only four. Alright, okay, starting decks created and each player draws a starting hand of five cards. Next, remember the aim of the game is to score victory points. You score three victory points for every province you control. You control a province if you have a town, a city or citadel counter on it. So for the start of the game, with 11 provinces drawn here, we're each going to start with 33 victory points, three points per province. So place your starting victory points up here on 33. The final piece of setup before the fun begins is these improvements. There's a big deck and again this is a bit of Dominion inspiration because you're not going to use all of these. We're going to use 16. All right, one, two, 15, 14, 15, 16. The rest are out of the game. And these are going to be cards that you can build your deck up with. So we're going to place these. They're available. They're going to be face up. You can claim these during the game. And you're going to need to do so to strengthen your deck. You've got things like Cavalry, Queen, Water Mill, a Militia, Scribe, a Diplomat, a Mystic. All right? So all these different things are going to be added to your hand. Let's dive into some gameplay now and show you how this works. It looks great all set up, doesn't it? Okay, let's start with the red player. We've got a hand of five cards. On your turn, you'll have two actions. Remember, you've got this little reference card to show you the actions you can take. You're going to take your two actions, and then if need be, you're going to draw back up to five cards. Okay? Now, I don't want to play with any strategy. I just want to show you how this game works. But um, we'll work through the actions, make sure we cover everything off. The first action says invade a province, and as it goes we need food to invade a province. This is the food icon here, Custis, and this tells you that Custis will give you food. So I do own this province, and this is kind of a clue of, of, as to what's in your deck. It's not in my hand, but I know that Custis is in here somewhere and it's going to give me food. And that's really useful, I love this clue. It doesn't serve any function other than to tell you that if you invade Custis, and steal Custis from your opponent, then you're going to get a card that generates food. Alright? Neat, huh? Now as it goes, we're going to be a little bit limited because we didn't draw a great hand. We do have some stone. We have some army icons. We have some gold and we have the build action card. 
So I've got an idea about what my two actions were going to be. I think I'm going to build with this one and build a castle. And I'm probably going to play some armies as well. Because um, I've got the army card which gives me two icons and I've got the floor which gives me three. Okay, so how do we how do we work this? Well we need to play a combination of cards. So for example, if I want to build a castle, I need to play the build action. So I'll play this card. This card gives me stone. I've only got one stone, you see, so I can build a castle. I can't build a road, it costs two or three over hills, um, and a city costs two. I mean I have two, but then I don't have the build action card, right? So for my first action I can build a castle. So I pay the action, I pay the cost, and then I need to play a province card, and the province card is going to say where am I going to build the castle. So there's my action, there's my cost, and then I can either build the castle in Moam or Bloor. Well Moam looks like it's the the place that might need defending. So I think I'm going to put the fortification here. There's a stash of counters that we can use here. We've got these these roads and castles. All right, so these are tokens that we can take to build these things. That, oh, okay. So let's just grab one of these castle tokens by placing it in Moam. Okay. And for building that castle, I can grab myself a victory point. One to the red player. And now I've got two cards left and one action left. Now I don't have to play these cards if I don't want to. I can actually put them in my reserves. This number two here says I can keep in reserve at most two cards. As I build cities, these are cities, I'm taking these tokens off and thereby my reserves go up. Do you see? Pretty cool, huh? So I can save more cards the more cities I build. As it goes, I'm going to use these for their army cards. So I've got three army icons on here. One, two, three. I don't need to play a province this time, but what it does mean is I can put three army tokens anywhere I wish in a province that I control. So I'll take three, but it has to be one. I can't spread them around. Well, I've fortified Moam. I think Gallingale looks quite vulnerable. I'm going to place them here. It's a province that's bordered by two provinces controlled by the blue player. That's my two actions. Draw back up. One, two, three, four, five. Before we hand over to the blue player, though, I've earned a victory point, so I've got up to 34. Keep your victory points current. Okay, so as you earn victory points, you move your track up. Next up is blue, and they do have enough cards to invade a province. Not, <laughs> not a wonderful invasion, but we'll do it anyway, because I want to show you how it works. So the first thing is you've got to pay a food. All right, I've got three cards with food. I only need to pay one, this is to feed your army, but you've also got to pay one card, and this is the province you're invading from. So I've got a choice of Camarine, Igra, and Palmain. So that's here, here, or here. Now I could invade Remis from here and take on the red player, but there's also these provinces here which are not occupied by anybody. So why don't I go for for Peened here. So the first thing I do is I need this one for the province. That's the province I'm invading from. I need to get rid of a card that I'm going to use to pay for food. Let's use this one. Let's keep this one in my hand for the moment. Um, and then I need some army forces. When you're doing your invasions, keep in mind these have to be adjacent to the the province you're invading from, okay? But you can invade across the sea. So if you've got, you know, I could invade over here, for example, from Cameroon. But in order to do so, I must play a ship resource, a ship card from my hand as well. All right, I need a ship to invade across the sea. As it goes, I've invaded with just one army, right? Just one icon here. So we grab one of our army tokens and place it in pinned. This is my first action. This is an unoccupied territory, and the military strength of this unoccupied territory is given by this number in the circle, three here. I need four army units to defeat 
and claim this territory for my own. So I can't take it immediately. All I'm doing is moving my forces in here. I have to take another action, and it has to be the first action of a turn, to end a war. And you end a war in a province where you have more armies. You're the winning army. Okay? Now, there's another problem here, and there's a dragon here. And a dragon will add four to the military strength of a province. So this province has strength seven. I need eight army tokens here in order to take this down. Not very achievable. Okay, so let's take that back and do something which is a little bit easier. So I think what we'll do instead is we will place some armies and we will do an invade. So we'll use some food. And actually we'll, we'll use this one because I don't think we're going to be going there anytime soon. And we'll invade from Palmain. Okay, so we're invading from Palmain. We're going to invade Nexus. So we'll spend the food and one army. I'm hoping to kind of solidify this position through the middle here. We can keep two cards in reserve. And that is my second action. All right, it takes an action to do this. So I'll draw back up. My hand is now empty. These got to remain face up on display for everyone to see. They don't form part of my hand, but I can use them on any later turn if I wish. Red player now. And let's see. I think the first thing we'll do. Gallingale. Hmm. Let's put this in the reserves and possibly another one as well, Victoria. And then for my second action, why don't we invade from Hatchel? So I'll pay a food and one army, and we'll we'll head in here. We're getting aggressive. And I draw my five cards, and it's Blue's turn. I'm hopeful for some gold because it would be nice. Yeah, I've got lots of gold now to be able to pick up some improvements. Let's grab an improvement card first. So we'll use this one and its gold value to pick up any one of these. I'm not sure which one is going to be the best, but I think the army card's nice. It's got gold on it, I and mean, I'm tempted by this one as well. The thing is, that you can only do this once per turn, so I can't use both of my actions to draft a new card. Okay, discard pile with that one. Now then, now then, let's see. Let's place a ship. We've got a ship. Allows you to invade across a sea area, but I'm going to use it for its resources. This ship icon allows me to place a ship token, and it can be in any area that is um, adjacent to a province that I control. So it's tempting to um, go here. I think I'm going to do that. This one's tempting though, because it offers me some strength in a very red controlled area. Why don't I do that? Let's do that. I'm adjacent here. Well, I'm here as well, actually. So, um, yeah, let's do that. And the interesting thing too is that I have the province card for Empyrean up here that we could, maybe on the next turn, because I've used both actions, build a city. It costs two stone to build a city. So let's play the build card. Um, I'm going to build in Empyrean, so you have to play the province you're building in. I need two stone. I've got one stone here from the market, and another stone for my reserves. Okay, now you can see the, the benefit of those reserves. And um, Play all these cards, now I can build a city. So I'll take one of my city counters from the reserves. Now my reserves have gone up to three and place it in Imperium. We replace the town with the city. Notice we're covering up these. These are the, the military strength of the provinces when they're not owned, right? When they're neutral. Um, so there goes my city. It's a shame I didn't have any more gold because I could have made a gilded city. Well, that's okay because I can grab one of these instead. And two victory points for blue. And we'll draw back up to five. Yep, five cards. All right. 
It would be quite nice if I could show you how these invasions work, um, how you can end a war and so on. And we do have an opportunity, we have some forces here. And blue didn't put any defences in there. So on blue's turn they should really have been deploying some armies in here. As it stands, as my first action, and only as your first action, you can end a war. So I can end a war here. Now the military strength is the number of army units that you have in the province, the number of ship counters that you have in adjacent provinces. So blue could have potentially put the blue uh, ship here and that would have defended this province. Castles and citadels, they add two to their military strength. This icon here adds one to your military strength. So this place, Shog, this is defended. This has rough terrain that, that offers you a defensive bonus. This place doesn't. And finally, any military strength bonuses on improvement cards that are in your reserve. We do have cards in our reserve, but it's just a province. But if I had, say, this hero card that has a shield icon on it, if this was here in the blue player's reserve, then they would get an additional one military strength. And that would be one versus one, and red couldn't win. You can't win, you can't take the end war action unless you are winning. There's a number of these cards around, like Militia here, who also has one. Reserve army, the general. Alright, so once more, it's number of armies, number of ships, number of shields in rugged terrain, number of shields in your reserves. So as my action, red player, it will end the war here and win. As a result, I replace the blue town with my town. Blue has to hand over the province card. Uh, was it Malibor? If it's in his discard pile, then it will go straight out. If it's in his hand, and he takes it out of his hand and replaces it with a card from here. If it's in his deck, then he gives it a shuffle. And this goes in the discard pile. Not only that, because we gained the province, we get three victory points. One, two, three. And blue lost the province, so they lose three victory points. One, two, three. Well, hopefully that's given you a sense of how the game plays. I really like it. I love the combination of deck building and, and Euro and war game and you know all that stuff in one game. A fantastic two-player. You can play three or four. And obviously the board gets a little bit more <laughs> conflict going on. Do check it out. Mythotopia by Martin Wallace and Treefog Games.